Sometimes you require minimalistic backgrounds just like this to loop so that you can get an infinite length of background while having informative information going on in the front. To create this, I required a few things that I had to figure out and I couldn't find anywhere else on the internet. So definitely keep watching to find out. In our default scene, we're going to delete the default cube and just shift A, mesh, and add in a plane. Once we've added in the plane, we can take our camera by selecting it, tapping Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, then grabbing it on the Z axis and just moving it up quite a bit. Then you can hit zero on your numpad to go into the camera view or alternatively view viewpoint camera. And then you can just grab it on the Z axis to move it higher by a bit more and then take the plane and just scale it up till it covers the entire camera's view. Once you're done with that, you can tap zero on the numpad to go out of the camera view and just duplicate the plane a couple of times. So shift D, Z and just move it up by a bit. Shift D, Z, move it up by a bit. Shift D, Z. So maybe four or five should be fine. So right now I've made five planes. Now you can go back to your camera view and just take the topmost plane, rotate it on the Z axis by something like, let's say 40 degrees, then grab it and move it back to somewhere like that. Then take the next one, rotate it on the Z axis by maybe minus 45, grab it, move it back. Maybe this is all right. Then take the next one, rotate it on the z-axis by the same amount minus 45 grab it move it back and then take the next one rotate it on the z-axis by the first one which was 40 degrees and then just grab it and move it to some base maybe like that now before we actually get into texturing or anything we can set all of our animation defaults so we can select our camera go to the camera settings over here go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one go to our render properties and just switch on ambient occlusion and to actually get the ambient occlusion over large distances we're going to increase the distance to something really high like 20 so that irrespective of where we place an object we get the ambient occlusion then we can go to our output properties change the frame rate to 30 frames per second change the end frame to 300 so that we get a 10 second long animation change the output folder to whatever you want a double slash saves it wherever your blender file is saved change the file format to mpeg video encoding container change it to mpeg4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless along with that in our render properties go all the way down to color management and in case if you want a light version, it's best to change the view transform to standard. In case of a dark version, standard and filmic works almost the same, but we'll keep it on standard so that we can change it to whatever color we want without having issues. Then you can go to the world settings over here and just change the color all the way to white. And lastly, you can select the light over here and just press delete so that we don't have that light. Now you can go ahead and change the viewport shading to rendered. And now you can see this is the light version already. In case you want to make the dark version, what you can do is just select one of the planes, go to the materials and just add in the material. And once you've added in the material, you can go ahead and select all the other planes and then finally select the plane that has the material, then hit control L link materials. And now you can go ahead and just increase the roughness all the way to one. And then if you change the base color to black, you get the dark version of this particular animation. Once you have that set, we can go ahead and actually deal with the motion that's going to happen. So for that, we're going to press shift A, mesh, circle, and then hit tab to go into edit mode, F to fill it, and then tab to go back into object mode. Now, if you actually zoom in, you can see that the circle is fairly rough and has jagged edges. So to fix that, we're going to press control 2 to add in the subdivision surface of level 2. Alternatively, you can go to modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface, and there you go. Now you can give this the same material as the rest of objects or a different one if you please, but I'm going to go ahead with same material keeping in mind the minimalistic feel. Now you can just grab it on the z-axis by a little bit so that it just moves up maybe to just above the second line and then we can just scale it down by a little bit. Now to actually get it to animate instead of keyframing and all of that we're just going to hit I to add in one location keyframe and we're going to take our timeline grab it and drag it up and just change from timeline to the graph editor. Now in the object transforms you should see a keyframe for all the different locations but we don't require it for the z so let's just hide the x location and the y location tap a to select all the keyframes x delete keyframes so now we have one for the x and y one for the y so let's first start off with the y location so let's just hide the x location let's take the keyframe and then make sure that it remains at zero and shift d x so that it doesn't move up or down and just grab it till it goes to the last keyframe so that's frame 300 so now you have two keyframes one at zero one at 300 what we're going to do is we're going to take the keyframe and just rotate it by some number so let's say 25 and then take 
the last keyframe and also rotate it by the same number so 25 now we can hit n modifiers add modifier noise now what happens with this is that right now if you play the animation you can see how the object actually vibrates and in order to change the way it vibrates what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the scale of the noise texture and we're going to decrease or increase the strength as we please and the actual length of these curves itself we're just going to scale them down to 0.4 and then go to the first one scale 0.4 so now you can just play around with the scale till you get a smooth animation that works based on how you want it to work if you feel like it's a bit too harsh you can always play around till you get exactly what you want. Now you see the problem is that if you actually zoom in, you'll realize that even though our keyframe is at zero, it doesn't actually start at zero. It's starting somewhere down here. That's around 0.1. And if you actually come to the last keyframe, similarly, it's starting all the way at plus 0.5. So there's actually going to be a jump when it goes from the last frame to the first frame and in order to change that jump we're going to change the blend mode from replace to multiply and that's why we have to make sure that it remains at zero so that the first and last frame remains exactly where it is and you get a perfect loop right at that end region and remember that the last and first keyframes are going to repeat so you're going to have one frame extra so make sure that you take this and just gx1 and that way you don't have that repeating frame and you get a perfect seamless loop for the y-axis location now what you can do is you can press this copy button so that it stays copied go to the x location and now again take this shift d x move it all the way to frame 301 and then rotate both of them by some arbitrary values so this time maybe we can go for r minus 10 and hence this one also we can do r minus 10 and just paste the modifier by pressing that and now if you actually leave it it'll perfectly move along the diagonal because both the x and y values are the same so to change that we're just going to increase the offset and the phase accordingly and now we'll get a motion that goes around here and there we can also switch off overlays to just make sure that we see what we're seeing if you feel like anything's moving too much or too little you can always play around with the strength and just make sure that nothing is too rough or too slow so that's what will help with the minimalistic feature so I would say I'm actually going to rotate this just a bit to make it a lot more subtle. So as long as the rotation on both of them are the same, it's going to perfectly loop. And there we have one sphere that's just moving around by itself, however it pleases. Now what we can do is we can select it and we can just go ahead and shift D to duplicate it and just move it aside somewhere. And then maybe change the scale a bit and also grab it on the Z axis and just move it down or up accordingly. And then what you want to do is make sure you hit control A, apply location. The moment you do that, it will no longer come back to the same position as this even though it's keyframed and you'll see that it has that offset but it's going to move in the same way as the first one which is not something that you want so in order to change that just go ahead select the y location and just change the offset and the phase any random value will work and just maybe change play around with the scale as well just a little bit the scale and the strength and you'll get something completely different so again go to the x change the offset change the phase change the scale by a little bit and change the strength also by just a little bit so that way you see you get two completely different forms of animation if you feel like okay both of them are going up at the same time and coming down at the same time Again, just take the X, rotate it by, let's say, 20 degrees, or let's go with something more subtle. So 12 degrees, take this, rotate it also by 12 degrees. And there you go. Now you'll see that it's completely different. So just like this, we can go ahead, select this, shift D, just move it around, and then G, Z, just move it up, and let's place this one right over here. Go ahead, hit Control A, location, and then change the phase and the offset, change the scale a little bit, change the strength a little bit, and change the rotations. So let's just rotate it by five, minus five, rotate minus five. And because this is almost flat, we're just gonna increase the strength a little bit. Similarly, go to the Y location, change the rotation, maybe 15, minus 15 rotate minus 15 change the offset change the phase and there you go so once you're done playing around with the scales and locations of all of these different objects you can add in as many as you want just place them in different regions and different heights so that they go under and over different things you can always scale up their sizes as well and then you should have something that looks fairly good and is perfectly looping as well so with that at any point of time, you can select your material and just change the base color to something that you like and you can get different versions of this particular animation. So hopefully you learned something cool from that particular video and you can use this technique to loop different animations in different regions and just 
have fun and be creative with this. I'll be posting a lot more of this content. So if you're enjoying it, please do comment. And if you'd like to, definitely subscribe because it'll help me out a lot. Until the next video comes up, don't forget to stay creative.